Hey everybody, welcome to the Warhammer Quest Cursed City Journey. We're going after Torgilius the Chamberlain this game, um, as we have now gotten through three of the decapitation missions. Also, um, we've got a new adventurer. It's going to be Dagne Holdenstock joining the crew, as I do through these last few um, decapitations as we get to fight Radiker and clear the Cursed City. Um, and we have Octrin returning to the party, as one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm just leveling up into levels basically for the decapitation missions. You guys don't need to watch me do like the back-to-back -back, uh, deliverance slash, um, what is it, deliverance slash scavenge missions to keep everything balanced and just pull up in levels. It would be boring and it would add two episodes to the rest of these, <laughs> the rest of the three episodes that are left. Uh, in between it would turn up from three remaining episodes to nine, which is just way too much. and. Way, way too much just like watching kind of nothing filler episodes. Um, and that is a kind of grind that I'm not super interested in, Curse City. I'll, I will say, having now played, I don't even know what episode we're on. Mm, I think we did five, six before we started doing decapitation missions. So we're on seven, eight, maybe nine now. Um, yeah, that's it. I, I'm willing to just skip those. I would actually just recommend skip those missions. <laughs> just every, once you start doing decapitation missions, just do them in order because they're long enough and fun enough because they're basically two part missions. There's like a um, deliverance mission, which is I think the fun Warhammer Quest 95 style mission uh, that jumps into a big like boss battle. They are they are fun enough. <laughs> like once you've gotten to the point of doing those, I'd say that you just just skip yourself ahead a level. Um, and that way you can use all the different heroes and have some variety and stuff too. Alright, show you the current heroes, show you the table, and we'll get this underway. So here is the party ready to go hit the streets, uh, trying to find Torgilius the Chamberlain and crush his Grave Sand Phylactery. Uh, we got Dagne Holden stock, no upgrades, just jumped like to level 3. That does mean he has all the same stuff as he is a um, stalwart that uh, Brutog has. So he's indomitable and dogged, so it means that he can flip or do a removal wound counter. Uh, he gets double successes if he does a crit vitality roll. And he's also dauntless. Ignore the first damage point allocated to this hero in each turn. That's pretty cool. Jelson at level 3 gets disciplined after this hero's activation roll. The players can reroll uh, results of 1 for the activation dice, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then Gloria at level 3 gets adaptive once per turn after making an activation roll. Just make one of the dice a 6. And then finally, Wise Advisor on Octran, he can hand off inspiration to people, and on a 5 plus when he does so, he gains inspiration points. He just becomes a little inspiration battery for everybody. With his path to, path to glory being drained life, it means he's going to be able to level up everybody up pretty pretty darn quick. You know, upgrades right now on Dagne and Octran. Uh, Dagne's path to glory is pretty cool. He gets two inspiration points whenever he um, draws a treasure or realmstern card from the discovery deck, so you want him to kind of do all the, the grabs if possible. He's got D12 for both his, his weapons, 2-3 on his axe, and 1-3 on the harpoon gun. He's a good candidate for the minimum, um, actually he can't get minimum damage too on a, on a gun, so the harpoon gun doesn't actually really up, um, like, uh, upgrade from that. But when you get him to inspire, he's 2-3 and 3-3, which is super nice. His unique abilities are hook, line, and sinker. Uh, his ability can be used once per turn. This hero is not adjacent to any hostiles and within 5 space of mysterious objective. They make a search 4, so he can do it within 5. Uh, and then Vault of Mercantile Endeavors, this hero can keep it to two treasure cards instead of one. So you can hold two treasure cards and also grab uh, distant treasure as opposed to having to be adjacent, which is kind of cool. When he inspires, he gains Keen Eye. Each time this hero draws a discovery card, draw two cards and pick one. The other one's placed on the bottom of the discovery deck. My axe goes to double D12s too, which makes him pretty murderous in melee. And he's still pretty good with his harpoon gun. See a melee guy versus a shooting guy, but having three shooting attacks now is actually four shooting attacks. Everybody's got a shooting attack. Can be pretty handy. Well, Goroslav and Watch Captain Halgrim are both dead, which means they won't show up this mission, which um, means you know some slightly easier results. We're on to now level three for the. Um, the results on the uh, the encounter cards, and let's deal with our two first rooms. Uh, we got a straight and a little sort of like regular alley. It's gonna put us at two out of the ten required investigations. Counter to the first for room one is level three, five dead walker zombies. What's well, all the zombies? I mean, they're to be more and more dangerous as the game goes on because just a base D8 damage, they are, and like all the out of well, I guess. Um, there's no more Gorslav to make them do all these like out of game activations, but they are pretty pretty deadly when he can be. They can be going like two or three times per turn. Second one is going to be five Wolf and Watch. Ooh, we're getting to big numbers, no whammy now, and they're just going to hang out next to this door. Place Grave Tide is placed. Let's make a Destiny roll for the first round. Threes lock out. 
fours lock out. We keep the two. Nine. Nine. What do you got? Well, you got a four, so you can at least grab that uh, mysterious objective. Next up's Jelson. He's gonna get some twos and a five. Glario. He's ready to party. And then Octrin wants to get on that tile before those zombies start to die. Oops, that's well, that was a one. Make that a six, and then he can reroll ones. Oh, jeez. And gets a three instead of a one. Our initiative order is, for round one, it's gonna be Dagne, Jelson, uh, then it's Glario, then Octrin, then uh, group one and group two. Well, that's an interesting <laughs> shuffle. Literally got everything in order that it was placed. That's <laughs> so weird. Ticks on, and we're gonna start with Dagne. Octrin do a agility test to try and jump in front of Glario. I feel like we do. I want him to go first. He's gonna discard this and make an agility test. This is a terrible idea, but I want him on that board tile. Ah, I succeed, sweet. So he's gonna swap spots with Glario, just so he can move before him and get on that tile before he starts killing things. Dagnai's gonna spend this five and he's gonna grab that. It's within five squares. Uh, so what does he get? Item is a treasure, a glow sand hourglass. I hear this treasure card can use it anytime during their activation. When it's used, move the nightfall counter clock, counterclockwise one space, then discard it. Sweet. So I'm going to gain that. It's going to give me two inspiration points. And I'll just immediately use it to go back in time one and save us some time from the grave tide. Go get our stab on. Uh, so we'll take a walk and go one, two. He's three, three. He doesn't actually run, which I think is hilarious. Then he'll stab, hit a zombie. Uh, do a crit, which will kill one. And then go again. And get a crit, which kills one. Good job, man. Dice six or less, he will gain another inspiration. That'll inspire him. He does. Sweet. And we'll spend those three to inspire. Wicked easy to inspire. All right, well, it's Jelson's turn. Jelson doesn't really want to kill anybody. He just wants to go and move, I think. A two to move and go one, two. And then actually, he'll just even spend them off the board to do that. And then he can just sit next to these zombies. <laughs> Get on his dice. Uh, then it's Octrin. Sweet. And so Octrin is going to go one, two, and just sit here with his three. I guess Glario goes, and he'll use the six to make a charge action. And he's going to surf. So he's going to go one, two, three, four to here. He doesn't want to do that yet, I don't think. He wants just to go to here. And then he'll make a free pistol shot. Gone, by the way, because we searched it with the harpoon gun. Um, and he'll do a no bless attack. Why not? Into one of the zombies. Let's say one in this square. Kill him. Another pistol shot because of his um, crystal matrix. Let's him do it twice. Shoot another zombie and miss. Oh, did uh, Oshran get an inspiration? He did. I think we just sit still. Please go. First one. Well, let's see what they do first. More might show up. On a two, I think that is actually a gravestone. So it gets placed. Another zombie arrives in the square. Advance. So they advance. None of them move, but that's going to trigger him to be able to make an attack. So this one advances and he'll stab it. Jelson uses his two. Make an ardent blade attack. Kills that guy. Does three damage. And do we get a Octrin inspiration point? Sure do. Goes to two. This one advances. Jelson will also stab him. Arden Blade. And kill him as well. Should we get a third inspiration point? No. This one advances and doesn't move. Jelson shoots his gun now. And doesn't hurt him. He's going to attack uh, Holden and miss. Bad. All right. Well, let's see what happens. We've got uh, Team Olfen Watch now with an 11. Recover, move, then charge. So it's going to be one, two, well, I guess one, two, three. Uh, and I guess Jelson could shoot that guy just to try and finish him off. He blows him away. Last dice though. So it's going to be one, two, three, one, two. Back's Jelson. Actually, I guess I could hollow stare. Hollow stare. Hit him with the horns, Tony. D8 plus D. Yeah, well, that dead skeleton. Next one. One, two, three. One, two. Nobody's got anything left, I don't think. No juice because you used no bless twice. Uh, so he's just going to get stabbed. Gets hit. For one, but he ignores it with his ability. Then it's one, two, three, one, two. And he'll get to re-roll his own dice now because he's a banner and he can see himself. Re-rolling. Ooh, that's a double. Uh, D12 for uh, him to block it. Blocks one of the two, so he'll take one. Like, um, with uh, Brutog, it's going to fall off the end of the turn, though. And then, oh, wait, did uh, you get... An inspiration from that. No, you didn't. That's one, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'll dice for it. Actually, I can just choose. He'll attack 
uh, Holt, um, Dagne again. And it's 2d6. And it hits with a crit. Can't get any better than that. So two damage. Is any of it blocked? It's all blocked. First turn. Uh, they haven't. They activated. And they weren't all dead, actually, so they stay. Oh, there's one left, never mind. They don't get driven off yet. Same turn. Time actually begins again, because we found a cool item to make it so the Gravesite didn't just eat us that quickly. Uh, four's lock out, one's lock out, five stay. And let's make some initiative rolls. Uh, this drops off Dagna, because he's tough like that. And then it's three, three, five, one. Man of Legend, that's Jelson Derek. Get to, to re-roll all these. That's a cool new ability. Oh, I went from a zero to a hero, like, super fast. Wario, didn't do much last turn, but we're just setting up Octrin. Oh, he's ready to go. And for Octrin, uh, he's pretty pretty good too. Let's see what's up. It's gonna be Jelson first, then Dogne. Group one, group two, uh, and then it's Octrin, and then finally, last but not least, it'll be Glario. Jelson, I think you just stab that uh, commander in front of you. Get yourself some sweet, sweet inspiration if you kill him. You do, with a crit, I'll kill him. Like inspiration from that, from his Path to Glory. And then next one, hit the next scout. Oh, sorry, did uh, we get any inspiration from Octrin? Nope, so now we hit hmm, the four, and we'll shoot the next guy, the banner, We kill him too. Is that another one for Octrin? Nope. We stab, ah, we'll Keep that. We'll use the board, I think, to stab again. Stab this guy so we can free up to run. We'll kill him too. And get some get some inspiration here. I need you to hand these off. All right, you do. So you're gonna get to three. And you can pass all these off. We'll have like the, the team inspired in the first room almost. Jelson runs, I think, and goes one, two, three, four, and then runs again. One, two, three. Uh, Dagne is now ripper to go with his axe. All he has to do is hit. And he murders this zombie. He sure do. An octrine. Nope. And he uh, he only runs three, so it's I mean it's just a double run, I think. We go one, two, three, one, two, three, go hold the door. Look that he's short and he'll hold him this last die. He could door kick. Let's door kick, let's do it. We'll kick the door with this with this five. Hey, Glario still gets to go, so I feel like we could maybe defend ourselves against whatever's next. So that'll be two more on the quest track because we're gonna flip two more of these. First one. And there it is. What's the encounter? Group three is going to be two Virgos Bloodborne. Ugh, hey. We should have, should have not kicked this door, but uh, such is life. They're right here. Uh, we'll go like that and like this to like Glario thriving. And the next room unlocks and it will be just a little passageway. I mean, not the best, not the worst. What's in that room? It's just Radiker the Wolf. Yeah, no big deal. Just, you know, King of the Vampire Mans, and he'll be next to this gate. Torgilius is, uh, you know, these guys are come back from a meeting. They had a little lunch hour, little lunch hour thing they had to do. Goes, uh, they're removed because they are all dead. Although I don't know if the marker counts. The marker might count. I think they actually stay until the gravesite eats them because I feel like they're still on the board of the markers here. They're not. They're not hostiles, and they're not part of a group. So they're actually gone. Okay, double checking the card. Group two, who are also all dead. So they'll go away. Then it's gonna be Octrin. Well, time to run, old man. Uh, we'll do a three to run and a two to run. And he'll go, well, two to walk. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Mm, four. Because I was here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. I'd end up on top. So I'd, I'd have to just stand here. Four, I guess, gets me to see one of these guys. With the eye lasers, the first one. Actually, we won't even be able to shoot them. They're just going to drop down to fours each. Glario is going to run. Go one, two, three, four. And then run again. One, two, three, four. He'll run and then he'll do the big charge and he'll make a sword attack. Give the no blessed attacks for later. So attacking this vampire. Nothing. Attack one more time. Do a crit, which is going to be for Guy Severe 3 to Nord by Vampires being fast. It is not, so he'll take three. And he'll use this to make a charge action, which he'll do the attack first this time. And he might as well use his pistol, I guess. Use no bless. Because he doesn't have the dice for later. Gets a crit again, but is it ignored? It is. Kill the vampire. Uh, but he gets to make his run action afterwards and go one, two, three. Okay, well, then group three goes, and that's going to be the Virkos Bloodborne. So they're going to charge probably on 12. Uh, Bloodthirsty charge, charge. And reroll failed attack rolls. So this one will move up. Octrin's gonna zap him though with an eye laser first. 
D8, D12. And this may curse him, or kill him. Uh, if he doesn't ignore it, he's dead. Three damage, four, no, he just dies. Charges, one. Auction will do it again with his last four. Hit him with the eye lasers. Do three, is any of it ignored? Nope. Cursed, so he's plus one, plus two damage against him now. Guy attacks, I will have him attack Dagne. And do maximum three damage. Does Dagne block any of it? Blocks it. Radiker time, this is the first time he's ever showed up. Uh, 12, he immediately rolls twice, I believe. Uh, I can't be driven off. Reduce damage suffered by this uh, by one to a minimum of zero. Each time he activates, make two behavior rolls, one after the other. Yeah. So twelve. Call the hunt. Add one Virgin's Bloodborne to this hostile's hostile group and deploy his reinforcements. Then this hostile in each Virgin's Bloodborne makes a charge action. So everybody charges. So bam. Uh, and then he charges, but he won't be able to get anywhere. Six. Oh my God. One, two, three, four. And then the Virgin's Bloodborne also charges. One, two, three, four, five. But he can't get to the melee. Good thing we bought time for the grave uh, to chase us. Oh, we forgot the first turn event. Ten. We got a born hero. Everybody did was healthy, so they didn't need anything. And then um, this turn's event. Twelve. Destiny fulfilled. Keep all our destiny dice. Well, that's good, because we're going to need it. Because uh, the grave tide's coming. This turn. Destiny roll. Well, we get to keep all the dice. There's a lot of twos, but those are some sweet weapon actions. Oh, I need auction during his turn to give... Jelson two inspiration points. I forgot to do that. I'm gonna try it now. Five plus gets one. Five plus he gets one. So he's got three still. And Jelson also has three. My entire plan to get all that inspiration. He just needed to move in and then hand them off and see if he could keep the ones he had. His advisor's insane. <laughs> okay, so uh, oh, and Glario did kill somebody. So he might have actually gotten an inspiration point as well. He did. He has one. He can only give one though. Which means he's got two and he's got four. You only do it once per turn. Go first, so you never know. You can't dump all your inspiration on somebody. Rolls, Dagne. He is ready to party. Nelson, also looking good. Uh, he could be roll ones, but he didn't get any ones this turn. Glario, he'll make that a six. Octrin, uh, does he want to invert his dice? Does that make them better? It does, actually. He'll go one, six, because he's trade back and forth. Put them three, and I think that's five. Yeah, overall gets slightly better. The turn. Oh, sorry, quest step. This arrives. Whoop. And it's gonna be Glario, Radiker, uh, the Virkos, Jelson, and then uh, Octrin, and then finally, last but not least, it'll be um, Dagne. Well, Glario, bud, you need to kind of save the day here, but the problem is you can't get anywhere. Uh, the other option is Jelson, who could just straight up murder these vampires, making a sweet, sweet vitality check, or a, a sorry, a um, quick reflexes, which I think is what we're going to have to do. Uh, that's right, uh, no, not quick reflexes, reroll. Oh no, it's you that rerolls. Ah, you ain't going to reroll, but you have a, you could reroll actually with a destiny point, so that's what we'll do. Spend a two off the board, we'll make a, a jelly test, try and jump in front. Jump in front of anybody we want, so we'll jump in front of Radiker, and we'll switch with Radiker. Which makes sense. We could just straight up switch with Glario. No, but that would put Glario behind us. It makes more sense to switch with Radiker. Mm, no, it doesn't, actually. I think we do switch with Glario. Because if we switch with Glario, then we get to go before everybody, and then we just deal with these guys. Checked up by Radiker, we get checked up by Radiker. There's nothing else we can do. Kill a vampire with Jelson, though. I get an inspiration point, I can immediately inspire. So if I shit this wounded one, I'll use my sword. Mm, I'll use my gun at... No, I can't, because it's, it's, not, it's not in melee. I'll use this second destiny die to make an attack. Attack. We hit. That's going to be for two damage. So he goes to five. And it's all down to the firewood stakes. Do they kill him? No. Go again with a two. Hit him with the Arden Blade again. Can't be ignored, so he's dead. That'll give us the three to inspire. Never mind. I killed him with the first one because he was cursed. He's plus one damage. That's three damage. That just kills him. Which means my second die. I'm now inspired, because I get one immediately from my Path of Glory. I can shoot. Let's shoot a gun at the next Verk. No, we'll shoot at Radiker. What am I doing? Kill this fool. Uh, so it's D8 plus D12. Uh, it's going to be two damage. Reduce, not an ignore. So it just goes to one. He, there's nothing else I can do about that. Stakes might hit him. Nope. Again with a four. He's any more off the thing. Uh, and that'll be a D8 plus a D12. Does two more damage. Goes to one because of his reductions. There's no roll, it just happens. Get him. 
No. Nelson, you did okay. You're just gonna sit on these lost dice because he's about to come for you. And now it's Radiker. He's gonna go. He's gonna roll a two. Dark Majesty, remove all wound or grievous wound counters from the next hostile. From next to this hostile, and then remove all ailments from this hostile, then make an advance. So he fully heals. Then he walks forward. I stab him with Jelson. I just shrugged off everything I did. I do four goes to three. And then the stakes do two goes to one. So I do four total. He just, he walks off all the damage I just did, and then I steps on my sword. Attacks me, D8 plus D12. This is a lot of damage this guy does. Does three? Cursed and stunned if I, uh, if I get hit. Block it, we're defense D8 on Jelson. I have to, to get a full, like, crit here. I do! I get an inspiration point from killing that Birkos. I did actually, so I have one next to me right now for a reroll, which could be important. Makes his second behavior roll, because he gets to roll twice per turn. And get a five assault, and then it's a charge followed by two weapon actions, but I can do another weapon action on the way in. I do four damage, uh, goes to three, and then the stakes do nothing. No, does nothing still. It's a seven, and then I'll have him attack Holden, because I don't want to die. Attack, does four damage, does Holden block any of it? He'll be cursed and stunned if he is. Blocks three of it, so he takes one and ignores that. For any damage, so he's okay, and then the second attack... Does three damage. Okay, Dagne, if you can block this, you're okay. None. Three damage, which means he'll lose this and this. Cursed and stunned, sweet. He's done, then the Bloodborne goes and makes an activation roll. Does a seven, but can't make it in, so just step to here. And it's Glario's turn. See if Glario can finish him off. Uh, pistol shot with no bless. Kill him. Uh, does a crit, which is three, but it's reduced to two. So he goes from seven to nine. Use the three off of here to do it again. Pistol to death. Nope. Does he reroll? He'll get it back if he kills him. Might as well. Does. That's three goes to two, and that'll kill Radiker, which will instantly give him one uh, back to go to two. And then on a ten or less, he gets a third one. He does. He might as well charge and go one, two. Uh, Guy Sever attack and do one damage goes to two. Is it ignored? It's not. So just two damage on that guy. He actually didn't need to make that roll yet because if he kills this guy, he might actually that that twelve might actually still get him a, a point. Uh, he'll attack again. See if he hurts him. He doesn't. He'll attack again. <laughs> not hurt him. Guess he runs. And goes one, two, three, four. Actually, it'd be one, two, three, four. It's Octrin. He's just gonna start walking. <laughs> and go one, two, and stop. And then he'll do a move again. One, two, three. Oh, stare at that guy. Let's see if we can blink him. Actually, we'll just stand there because we might actually kill him. Uh, we'll go. Severe, which is three damage. Is it ignored? Nope, and he's cursed now. Do it one more time. Uh, Hall of Stare. Doesn't do anything, but he'll re-roll one of these. He might as well. He gets him. Ignored. Nope. Uh, does he get the inspiration point? Uh, no, but does he also get one from just being on the same board tile? Yes, so he goes back to four. And he's going to give an inspiration point to... He'll, sorry, he'll inspire, because he might as well. I have one left, and then he'll give an inspiration point to Glario. And get one back. He does. Bloodborne instead. You lose your stunned, uh, and have one die left. I think you're just gonna run. One, two, three. And then make a vitality check. Success, he's gonna get both of those off. No, nope, he'll lose uh, flip one, actually. It's him all done. But he's still cursed. Turn. We managed to murder almost everything that was in our path, but we got stuck a little. Phase for the round. A ten would be nice. A two. Uh, Will the master? Everybody moves. He's dead, so it doesn't matter. Uh, then time keeps on ticking. This gets destroyed. It's destiny for the next turn. Let's see what we got. A straight. Sweet. We get to keep them all. And loses that and gets to roll three dice because he made that vitality check. And get some ones and some fives. Sin is laughing this turn. He's gonna get to inspire, and that'll be the whole party inspired. Uh, and he gets to make that one into a six because he's adaptive. Octrin, uh, he'll invert his dice because why not? 
because that makes that a much better roll. Going when? It's going to be Jelson, followed by Glario, followed by Octrin, followed by uh, the man of legend that is Dagne, and then the two combat groups are already dead. Well, Jelson, get your run on, I guess, and go one, two, three. Actually, we'll do a walk first, I guess, and then we'll do a run. One, two, three, four. Door, because why not? We find, we find a cool little, like, tourney bout. No big deal, just a blood fountain. I'm sure that'll be fine. And what's guarding that blood fountain? Their fountain, five elfin watch. In the next room, so we're at six now for our mission. It's a nice little turn. Sweet. The grave basement, no big deal. What's down there? It's, oops, too many cards. Uh, Torgilius, a corpse rat in a bat swarm. Found him! <laughs> Uh, he was, that's, I guess he was just having that meeting with Radiger, and they were about to go say bye and go do their own thing, and uh, got interrupted. Light lunch of corpses and stuff, you know, no, no, not too, nothing too heavy really. Um, and with the door kicked, I guess we can start killing skeletons? It's what we do. Use that to do it though, because that would be three dice off of here, which means I need to use this one. Uh, so then we kick a skeleton? Wait, I think Jelson just waits actually. Is next, he's gonna inspire. He'll do a no bless shot into a skeleton, and that's two to kill one. Actually, it's a three to kill one. He'll do a no bless shot again and kill the other one. He'll dive in and charge uh, with a six. And so he spent all this to inspire and go one, two, and stab that guy into the champion, kills him. Stab again into that guy and do nothing. A charge action, I guess, into him. Kill him. He'll go one, two. Just end there. Auction o'clock. He's just gonna give one to Dagne, because why not? And see if he gets one back on a five. He does. He's just whispering wise words. He's gonna run. Actually, no, he's gonna search. Does he want to search? I think he can get the other one. He'll search and see what this is. Daddy knows he gets two pick the highest. No, he's not going to do that. Uh, he'll walk. One, two, three. Then he'll run. One, two, and stop here. Then he'll hollow stare, I guess, because his eye lasers are amazing into that, that skeleton, because it's dual, and kill him for two. Oh, hollow only one. Do it again. He needs to get the crit. Ah, right, he does another one, kills him. Get the inspiration. He does not. Sit on that six, which go to a five for their hollow stare. Goes. Uh, he's gonna flip this thing, and we'll get two pick the highest. So it's a curse catcher or a potion of cognitive vitality, and he can use this one, so he'll keep it. And then immediately, oh sorry, and this one goes on the bottom. And he'll immediately use that to break his curse. Move. That's gone now. And go one, two, three. And then he'll make a vitality check with his last dice. His vitality is D8. And pass, so he'll flip this, which means it'll be gone next turn. Then group three goes, the Fear Ghost, they're all dead. So they go away. Because we murdered the triplets. Sounds like a family meeting here. Uh, then group four goes, which is Radiker, And he has also been driven back for the moment. And his card goes away. Then it's group one, which has also been driven off because I slew all these skeletons. An inspiration point, actually, for uh, old Jelson there. Sure did. Goes to two, actually. It's just group two, which is going to be Tordilius and Friends. What does he do? He rolls a two, Chittering Horde, to play all slain corpse rats. If there's no hostile group that contains corpse rat, add three corpse rats to models this hostile group and deploy them as reinforcements. Then each uh, hostile in Torgelius' hostile group makes an advance. Torgelius is going to shoot us uh, after his move. His move is two, so he'll go one, two, and then he's going to Necrotizing Bolt. I'll have him go, well, actually, sorry, first auction shoots him because he uh, has lasers and stuff and misses, but we'll reroll the d12 because I want this curse. Yeah, we got him, so he'll take one, and then I'll also curse him. We hate each other after all. Uh, and then uh, he's, a, he's at the entrance, so I can also shoot with uh, Jelson. He'll shoot his judgment. Uh, that's four goes to five damage. Six total, but the firewood stakes. 
Finish him off. He just dies. And bang! Shot in the kisser. Let's go. Uh, one, two, three. I guess I could shoot with Octrant with Jelson, but he's gonna wait actually for the bats. So five. One, two, three, four, five. And he'll take a shot as well with his gun. And I think that kills that guy unless he flops away. That's no flappy for him. Flaps on tens. So more than three. Not a kill. Actually rolls to activate and rolls a 10. Or sorry about the uh, rat. And gets a death leap, makes a charge, and then we get a free attack action afterwards. So we'll have him charge, I guess, Glario. It's re-rolling. Re-rolling. Still a miss. I guess to stab him back with Geist Severe. And re-roll. Oh no, I don't get to re-roll that. Uh, it's just gonna be two damage. Still alive. Next phase. It's a five. That means crisis time. We'll do number nine, which is 31 paragraph 27. So 3127 is a grizzly hunt. A citizen emerges from an alley, falling over themselves in panic. They are fleeing from a vicious pack of bloodborne. That here must choose to ignore uh, their plight or save the victim. If they choose to ignore it, go here. If they choose to try and save it, we'll go with Jelson. He'll try and save them. He'll use them as bait? I feel like Jelson would use them as bait. Now I'll try and save him. 43. Uh, paragraph 153. Uh, the hero draws their weapon to protect the fleeing quarry as the pack advances. The hunters attack the quarry three times. They uh, Each time they attack, the acting player rolls a d8. If they're stalwart, it's d12. If they're successful, the acting hero successfully defends. If the acting hero fails to protect the quarry with two or more attacks, the quarry is slain. Otherwise, they gain two inspiration points. Hit twice. So first one succeeds. Second one fails. Third one fails. But we could reroll with an inspiration, and we will. Fails. It happens. He's removed, and we'll just place him back over here. Turn. Time continues to pass. This room gets eaten. Destiny like uh, another straight. My God, we're on fire. Dagne, you managed to heal that back because you are a stalwart at level three and get a very interesting roll, almost a Yahtzee. Uh, you're looking pretty good. You can roll that one. Get a four. Now oh, uh, make that a six for some hot activation dice. And then it's Octrin. Where are you at, old man? Oh, geez, you'll invert your dice because, of course, you will. And go to six, six, one, five. Where are we at? It's gonna be Glorio, ironically, then the rats, then um, Dagne, Jelson, and finally Octrin. Glorio, make your stab, son. Uh, 2d8, just needs to do one. Kills that guy. No need for past the glory anymore, so you'll just, I guess, run. And go one, two, three, four. And you've used both of them off here now, so you'll make a run and then I uh, open the door so one two open the door and see what we find the first little hallway in that hallway it's just three workers bloodborne yeah no big deal it's three vampires now uh, I'll stay next to this they just immediately spawn back in the next room is a radicker again and we're just surrounded by vampires now it's gonna be this shape what's guarding it it's Two Korsagi Night Guard. Well, it's getting getting kind of serious around here. You guys are coming hot and heavy. Oh, if you sit on these, you could make two Noblesse attacks. A crippling Strike, which would be cool. So I think you're going to do that. You're going to do a Crippling Strike, except for attack against this guy. Ooh, miss. And then do a Charge. So make a Geist Sever attack. Actually, might as well make a Noblesse attack because it's more damage. And get a crit. Is it ignored because uh, he's a vampire? It is ignored, and then you just run and go like, "No, thank you." One, two, three, and just sit here. Which is Torgilius goes. It's gone. Oh, sorry. I should put out uh, groups three and four. Or sorry, two and th it'd be one and three. No, two and three. No, I'll just do it as one and two. It doesn't really matter, but it should be two and three. Because of the positions. Otherwise, we mess up our corridor. These guys are done. Dagne! Uh, you're gonna 
I guess, make a move and go one, two, three. Then you're going to search this sucker and draw two, pick the best. Skeleton key or a potion of coagulated vitality. Uh, we'll keep the potion. It's better for us at this point. And get rid of that. We just move into murder range with our harpoon. So we'll use the five to do that. Actually, it doesn't really matter. We could use the four. Now there's gonna be three guys coming, so we'll use the five to do that. One, two, three. Use the six to go again. One, two. We'll drop down, but there's gonna be vampires coming through the door. So get that ax ready. It's in. You're just gonna run and go four. One, two, three. Just get ready to fight every vampire. Octrin, you're just gonna go stand in the doorway. One, two, three, get ready to shoot your mind lasers. It is a vampire clock. What did the Vircos Bloodborne do? They roll three. Blood charge action. They go towards the wounded guy. There is no wounded guy, so they go to the closest. So it'll be one, two. I guess and be done. Octrin will shoot him, because why not, with his eye lasers. And miss. Then jostle him with a sword and might just kill him. Uh, Arden Blade, Grievous for four. And then stakes, nope, finish him off. And then I guess Gloria can't do anything. Dagna could shoot his harpoon gun, kill him. Hits him for two, does he ignore it? Cause that'll keep him alive. He does. Then we can move the target if we want to. Within three spaces, do we want to do that? You can reel him in over here cause then he attacks him. Much better defense. So attack, hit for two. Does uh, Dagna block it? He so comes after us, one, two, three. We do the same thing again. Octron shoots his mind lasers and gets nothing. Uh, then Jelson attacks with his sword, goes in, double D8s. Uh, Grievous for four. Does the stake kill him? No. Great trap, but it didn't quite work. And so then he attacks uh, Jelson for nothing. Goes in, one, two, three, four, five. More time, Oshran shoots the mine lasers. Just do this and curse him. All right, we hit him, but is it ignored? It is not, so he'll take three and be cursed. And Dagne is gonna try and hit him with his ax, just to save some dice on Jelson. Uh, 2d12, does four damage, and it's not blocked, so he's dead. The night guard do four, charge. So they're gonna move three and then three again. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, I guess Jelson could shoot his gun. Doesn't have any mind lasers left. Uh, gun does nothing, followed by. Oh, actually, the two doesn't even go off. Same with this guy. He'll go one, two, three, one, two, three. Vent phase. Our trap did not quite work. Ten. That's going to be a vitality check. Not that anybody needs one. The ailments. No one needs to recuperate. So we're off the races. Turn. This room gets eaten. Sorry. Destiny roll. Uh, those go away, but we keep the three, the one, and the five. Dagne, he's a little tired, but he's ready to kill some vampires. Son, he's also looking good. Can use all of his abilities. Galario, uh, he'll make that one into a six. Octran, he'll invert his dice again. And go six, six, five. Two of the round, it's gonna be group three, which is the night guard. Then group two, uh, Glario. Dogne, and then Jelson and Octran. So we're getting jumped. Comes the Night Guard. Ten. Charge. Each hostile makes two move actions, and then it ends adjacent to as many people as possible. I set that up for them. One, two, and then I attack everybody. Damage into Dagne. Uh, it's going to be four damage. Does he block any of it? Uh, one. So he'll take three damage total, which will knock these out. Into Glario. Misses. Into Jelson. Does four. Did you defend any of it? Nope. I got these two dice. They can't both get to us. One, two. It's just going to attack Dagne. Huh. Does one. So it's three damage. Does he block any of it? Blocks it off. Real sporty over here. We just got a big chunk taken out of this. Uh, that's group two, which is the um, vampires. The Bloodborne. Twelve. Actually rolling everything. Nobody's uh, able to covering fire overwatch yet. So one attacking Dagne. Oops, that's the wrong D12. Misses, but re-rolling. Hits for two. Does he block any? None of it. Uh, so he's gonna take one and lose another. Be that actually. He'll block one of it, so he'll just lose 
this. Yeah, it takes one of the two. Uh, the other one attacking Jelson. Misses, but rerolls. Stomach. Glario's going first. Uh, can he murder dudes? Does it blend? Joshua was going first to curse somebody, but we don't have a choice here. So we're going to go with Geist Sever. Making an attack for two. Is any of it reduced? Yep, down to one. So one so far on that first night guard. Back again. Actually, no, we want to save that for, I think, Jelson. Uh, he'll attack again. And do three. Is any of it blocked? Uh, yep, so down to two, so just three total on that night guard. We'll go again. This time with a uh, charge doesn't even matter. He'll just make another. He might as well do his pistol, actually. And do nothing. And then go with his pistol again for his last one and do nothing. Spooked. Hey, well, you're going to hand this potion to Jelson because he needs that more than you do. You're going to make some axe attacks against the big guy. So first axe attack. Nothing. Uh, and then you'll do another... No, you'll save it. You'll do a vitality check, I guess? And crit this will just heal back up. How do I reroll it? Yeah, I reroll it. Yeah, we get both of them gone. Or thing, but we get fully healed. Jelson, chug your potion. First one is removed. Second one is removed. Yeah. I'm gonna go sick house. First one, stab a vampire. Blade misses. Uh, which means I don't hit with anything else. Again, Arden Blade kills that vampire. Osprey does two. The state kills him. Arden Blade into the night guard. And do two. Uh, the stake does nothing. Uh, is it reduced? That too? It is, so it's only one, so it's down to four. This guy's taking forever to die. Again. Hit for two. Is it reduced? Potato. It is, down to one, so he's at five now. And one more time with the Arden Blade, because this guy's in melee with you, you can't use your gun. Two, because we're not getting the crits here. Uh, is it reduced? Nope, so that goes to seven, and then the other one misses. I'm hoping you kill that guy, <laughs> Jelson, you didn't quite. This doctrine, uh, I guess you st eyeball stare for a five at that night guard, and don't get it. You eyeball stare again, and don't get it. Oh my god, just curse him already. Eyeball stare at the back one. You do for one. Is it blocked? It's not. Which means he's also cursed. Healed up, but the, the dudes are all very worn out right now. <laughs> this, you can't really do anything. You could run, I guess, into the middle of everything. Why not? Hope you go first. One, two. Oh, sorry, did Jelson get a point from that vampire? He did. Phase four. Uh, everybody makes a move action. Well, they can't go anywhere because they're all Jason. Gets eaten. You roll. Time's ticking forward. Lose the twos. Keep everything else. One, four, five. The thing is, we have our health. <laughs> uh, Dagnay is ready to hit stuff with his ass. Nelson. Oh my god. Well, good thing you can reroll ones. That's better. Lario. We'll make that a six for triple sixes. And then, last but not least, Octrin. It's almost impossible. Unless you split your dice, it's almost impossible to get a bad roll of Octrin, I'm discovering. We could invert these for six, five, two, two, which is slightly better. Initiative. It'll be Jelson. Then it'll be uh, Dagne, group three, Octrin, group two, and then Gloria. Long here. The, uh, the graveside is, is catching up, which is no good. Jelson, I need you to kill the guy in front of you who has seven wounds on him uh, with a stab. Blade. <laughs> Reroll one of these. Because I want to kill this guy. I do for two. Uh, does he block any of it? Nope. And then the stake kills him. Unless, actually, even if he blocks it, it still kills him. Because that's three out of the seven. Kill, not you can shoot your gun. <laughs> shoot that vampire. Because you can't ignore it. Uh, that'll be two. He's at four already, so he just dies. And I think you run for it. I think you're going to make a run action for three. One, two, three, four. A walk action. One, two, three. A run action. One, two, three, four. And then use this last one to pick up and search. What do we find? In a sensor, when this card's used, this here cannot make weapon actions. And cannot be picked as, a, as the leader 
by the leader is targeted with a hostile weapon action. Get a jail free card. Pretty sure we can, these guys can take the rest of these guys. It's Dagne, that guy's cursed, so we punch him. Four or five damage right now, so that's five damage. Uh, he's at one. He blocks one of it down to, actually he's at one or two. Two, so he blocks five down to three, so he goes to four. Again, he takes nothing. We do it again. He takes five, uh, which is nine total. Again, and he can't live through that, so he's dead. Harpoon this sucker, Let's see what happens. We could just harpoon it next turn, I think is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna use that to run. One, two, three. A little closer to not being grave tided. All right, uh, that's group three, which is the Bloodborne, who are gone. Have been destroyed. Oh, sorry, did I get a, um, did you get a inspiration point? You did, from the Bloodborne. Did the other guy? Yes, he did as well. So Dagne and you both get an inspiration point from killing giant monsters this turn. For clearing the board, we're supposed to last turn. <laughs> so then Ocarin goes, uh, group two goes, is discarded. Basically, these guys are just gonna run. So uh, Auction goes first, he moves, runs, runs. So he'll go, actually we could just take this. We won't get to pick the highest, if we really care, we don't. We'll search this with Auction, he's not carrying anything right now. Uh, Vital Elixir, get rid of disease. Move, move, run. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Glorio, just runs a bunch. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Event phase, nine. That's a born hero, but nobody's down or hurt. This gets eaten. Destiny roll. Those lock out, these stay. Time advances. Dagne, pretty good. Jelson. Again, this reroll, whoops, that was a five. I knocked it over with my finger. Uh, these ones to reroll. That's a handy ability rerolling ones. Glario. I can make that two a six. Octrin. You don't need to do anything, buddy. You're doing great. He's going where? Uh, it's going to be Glario. Then Octrin. Jelson. Well, Jelson needs to spend a die. He'll spend this three to try and jump in front. Uh, he's D8. One, I guess he just goes before Octrin. Oh, I could re-roll it. I'll just keep it. He's happy to go second. Glario can get out of the way. I'm gonna go four. Right, he's just gonna burn his activation dice, actually. Five, five, four, three. The door, and then Jelson will go. He'll use this five to kick the door. And what do we find? The last two rooms. It's a big corridor. Two encounters in it. As if the last one wasn't scary enough. Uh, it's three bat swarms and then uh, six corpse rats. Well, okay then. So six corpse rats and three bat swarms. One's gonna have to be over here because we run a room around this and these would get placed first. That's a lot of vermin. I mean, that makes sense outside of Torgilius's lair. And then the next one is gonna be one encounter and a little elbow. Garden that. It's four dead walker zombies. We've had our, our mini boss fight for now. Well, I guess from there we start shooting. We'll save that for Dagne. We'll take a shot into, cause we gotta clear paths. So we're taking a shot here. Kill a rat swarm. We sure do. That's four damage, which is enough to kill him. Uh, we'll go again and shoot the blood bat. I'll just this bat, and we'll kill him too. It's two wins, so if he reduces it, he dies. We're gonna get up close and personal, so we're gonna run. One, two, three, four, and then we'll make a stab into that corpse rat, because they can't get to us this turn, which is nice. And it's just 2d8. And we'll reroll one, why not? Because we could kill it. Nope. I can still shoot his gun at least a little bit. Um, so then it's going to be, who's next? Octrin, a run action, and go one, two, three, four. We just tomes of death have everybody fight each other, but there's nobody really that dangerous here. So I think we just start shooting. We'll shoot a bat, a blood bat, uh, and do nothing. We'll shoot the blood bat again. 
and do one, which can't be reduced because it's a minimum of one. Oh, but he's cursed now. Shoot a bat swarm, because why not? And crit and maybe kill him, unless he dodges. He doesn't. It's on time. Any left, uh, he could just move, move, move. So nine squares. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then shoot. No, he'll shoot. Yeah, he'll shoot his harpoon gun into this rat. Sure does. That's going to be two damage, which won't kill him. But he'll place him three away. So he can go one, two, three. And then he could not quite hit him with his axe. Actually, I guess he could sh have done that to this guy and then place him into melee. No, it doesn't really matter. Sit on his last die. He will also use it to do the keen eye. He will. He'll just draw the hook line. He'll use the search action. It's within five. Ashes of Axie and a Realm Stone card. We'll keep the Realm Stone. Off they go. So the bats, there's only one left. It's going to go nine, which is blinding attack. Uh, it makes an advance, and if it's successful, attack. Lower the remaining activation dice by one. Uh, he's closest here, so steps in. Makes an attack. Six misses. Rats. There's six of them. They roll a six. Swarm. They become unwounded, and then advance. So we'll have you go towards Dagne. Attack and do a Grievous, which is two damage. Does he block it? He blocks one, but he becomes diseased. We'll attack Jelson and hit. Does he block it? He does. This one's gonna go one, two, and attack Jelson and hit. Does he block it? He does. This one's gonna go one, two, and attack Octran. Does he hit? Yes, and then Octron's defense is only D6, but he blocks it. This one goes one, two, three, and doesn't quite make it to anybody. Zombies, they, I think advance. Curse Briar, it's just an advance, so they just move up to the door. End phase, we gotta cut our way through this wall of rats. Nine, we can make a, we can remove an ailment, which we'll do, or for Dagnae. Uh, then this gets eaten, as time marches forward again. It's getting close to sundown. Any roll? Sorry, we've done 10 explorations, which means we can leave after this. What do we get? Ones all go away. We only have a five. He shrugs this off because of dogged. Or sorry, because of um, indomitable. And then this is Rolson. Can we roll that one? Just handy. Becomes a two, slightly better. Rio. Uh, can make that a six. Not the best roll. He's tired from waiting outside. And then Octrin, if he reverses it, gets worse, so he'll just keep the way it is. We are at group two. Uh, that's going to be Gloria wants to get into the war. Jelson, group one, group three, Dagne, and then Octrin. Group two is the rats. They're going to go first. Do we let them? I feel like we should let them go. Let them do the thing. They get an eight, which is advance. So they all take a stab at us. Uh, into Jelson, nothing. Into Jelson again, nothing. Into Octrin, nothing. Into Diagne, one. Does he block it? Sure does. And then this last one, I'll have him go to with Diagne as well. Misses. Mario Clock, uh, he's going to shoot his gun, rat the first, and kill him. Uh, he's going to shoot his gun into Rat the Second. Oh, he's not actually. He's going to charge Rat the Second and go one, two, three. Actually, he go three to here. Use his sword into Rat the Second. He's only has three wounds and kill it. Sword the boss rat and do nothing. And sword the boss rat again and do two. Jelson's turn. So after this, the bats are going to go. So he's just going to take a second to stab. Uh, uh, two, if he blocks it, uh, sorry, it's actually three, because he's cursed. He does not get the dodge, so he's dead. Then he'll stab a rat, because why not, and do nothing. And then he'll stab a rat again, and kill it for four. Rat one more time, and kill it. I forgot that uh, mysterious objective was taken by Dagny, so it's gone. And then he'll just sit on his last one. Uh, group one is the bats, they are removed. Then group three is the zombies. What do they do? Do they grave call? No. Fires that can cause trapping. So that's gonna be one, two, 
Jelson will stab him with his sword and do two. Does he finish it off with the spike? Nope. Attacks the D8 and misses. Uh, and then it's one, two. He's got no activation dice left. It does two damage. Does he block any of it? He blocks it all. And it's one, two, and attacks. And does two damage, which he doesn't block. So he's trapped and loses a wound. Goes to Grievous, and he gets the trap token. This one goes one, two, and also attacks. Misses. Oh, sorry, I don't know why I rolled that. Oh, I might have gotten some rat points. I actually had, I could reroll that defense check. Am I trapped? I'm not trapped, actually. I had an inspiration from killing those three rats. Inspired, it's very hard to remember their inspiration points. Um, and so that is them having gone. Then it's going to be Dagne. He'll just make an axe attack into that rat swarm and explode it. And he's just going to dive into his buddies. So make a walk action and go one, two, three, just to dive in the middle. Next attack to hit the un first unwounded one. Three will kill it. Axe attack again, do the same thing. And kill this one too. Inspiration on a six or actually nine or less. Uh, no. Doctrine, and he's going to, I guess, mind bullets the wounded one, because he has to do one to kill it, and he does. Actually, before he does that, he can make them attack each other, nah, no, it doesn't really matter. He'll just kill them. And uh, he will mind bullets the other one, and do nothing. Bullets one more time. And get one damage. I guess just stand there. Walk. He could go one, two, and stand here. Got one damage on him. End of the round. Destiny reverse. Sorry, uh, event phase. Two. Uh, bad guys move, but don't attack. All adjacent. So then the Grave Tide continues its onslaught of eating the table. Let's see, roll for the round. It's getting dark. Sun's getting real low. Fives go away. Keep the rest. Activation dice, Dagne, happy with what he has. Wilson, looking good too. Mario is gonna turn that into a six, I have triple sixes. Octrin does not need to really do anything because he's happy. For the round, it'll be Dagne, group one, which is the rats who are, oh, sorry, group one is gone. Group two, which is the rats. Group three, which is the zombies. Octrin, Glario, and then Jelson. Well, Dagny's just gonna hit a guy with his axe. This guy's also cursed, so he does four damage and kills it. Just run, run. So he's gonna go six, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Use a four to open the door. As we enter the lair, and then a one to step in and be done. It's a four to, actually before he does that, he'll use a four to search this. Pick the highest or the best. A trap or a trap. Well, I guess it's a trap then. Let's roll. He's okay. And then pick another one. Potion of uh, Vial of Concentrated Potency. Plus one plus zero for the next melee attack. The dwarf from his prize. Everybody else just uses their dice to walk. Group three gets destroyed. Group one gets, or group two gets destroyed, sorry. And these guys all just walk into the lair. That's it, we've safely made it into Torjulius's little warren. We're all inspired. Uh, we had a rough moment there with the, um, Two Night Guard and the Virkos and Radiker and the Virkos showing up, but we made it. And here we are set up in the Whispers in the Dark. The bloodless corpses of hundreds of would-be rebels line the walkway to the Ebon Citadel. A visual reminder to all of the Chamberlain's ability to find and deal with those who would dare challenge Radiker's rule. So effective has he been over the years that these knights none dare so much as whisper words of rebellion or regicide, as no plot, however secret, has ever escaped the eyes and ears of the Spymaster's verminous minions. Um, <laughs> if that were the extent of his crimes, then Torgilius's death would be welcome act of justice, justice. However, as the victims of his many experiments would attest, his death has been long awaited by many, their souls trapped forever in the walls of Barrowmark, constantly crying for release. So, we've arrived at his lair, and now it is protected by bat swarms and rat swarms. Uh, you can smash the phylacteries, obviously, to try and kill him, and uh, the reinforcements for these guys will appear um, on a d12 roll when they activate. So group one is the bat swarms, group two is the corpse rats, Three is the Night Guard and four is Torgilius. Now, the Night Guard and Torgilius will not activate until we're visible to them or they've taken damage. They wait. 
Also, all of the hostile groups, when they activate, don't actually activate in a visible order. I basically shuffle out the cards, then reshuffle all the hostiles and place them face down. We don't know what order they're gonna activate in, so it could be anything. Also, don't make a destiny roll while Torgelius is on the table. And remember, these guys are going to empower almost immediately. He can't be stunned, and he can't be deployed as a reinforcement. So that's it. No destiny roll. We get closer to nighttime. Dagne is ready to party. Now, he's going to be super ha like uh, handy for grabbing these flak trees at a distance. It's going to speed up um, not having to wander in and fight all these bad guys. Oh, my God. Glarius got a Yahtzee. That was amazing. Well, that one for Jelson. We're having a hot first turn. And then Octrin. This is, this is his game. He's here to kill his old rival. Activation order, Jelson, then it's going to be um, Dagne, Glario, Octrin, uh, group four, which is Torgilius. Well, actually, sorry, these are just the remainders. I reshuffle these and place them down. Uh, so it's going to be, well, Torgilius still, then group one, which is the bats, then group three, which is the night guard, and two is the rats. So really, these ones aren't going to activate because they're not going to advance. So Jelson, he's going to just, I think, get moving. Um, we don't have any dusty dice, so it's all us. So run, run. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. Bat. Actually, yeah, might as well stab bat and then stab bat. So the first one, actually, we could sit here and shoot bats, which is probably actually better. Here and shoot bats, actually. So we'll shoot a blood bat. First one uh, takes two, and then do the stakes kill it? Maybe. Uh, do they dodge it though, actually? They don't. And then the stakes miss. Shoot into a. I should have shot regular bats. Shoot into a regular bat. And kill it potentially, unless it ducks it. Actually, even if it ducks it, it's still too damage, which kills it. It's done. Uh, then it's going to be the Man of Legends that's Dagne. He'll move, move. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And then move again, one, and then kill this moon gun and just stand there. I feel I'm not having destiny dice. <laughs> uh, this is the turn they're not super dangerous, so I'm not worried about him being by himself. Then it's going to be Galario, and he'll make a charge action, I guess. It doesn't really matter. One, two, three, four. He won't be able to do it. He'll just go one, two, three, four. Then uh, make a charge action. One, two, three, four. Second die. He'll make a stab into the wounded bat no the unwounded bat guy sever does enough to kill him if he doesn't dodge it he does dodge it though down to one and attack into it kill it because it can't block enough charge action uh do another guy sever attack into that boss bat do one he can't do a minimum of one so he'll still die and then he'll make a run action over here and go one, two, three, four. Well, my last action, I could have blown that thing up, which would have been nice. I'd have two of these down. Trin, uh, run a bunch. Go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And just sit here. What's Tregelius do? He rolls a four. Chilling Whispers, the leader must pick a hero. The hero must remove an activation dice. Uh, if they can't take a damage, we'll put it on Dagnan, he'll just ignore it. Group one, which is the bats, uh, they roll a seven. Do any of them come back? No. It's blinding attack, so it's an advance followed by an attack. So the first one's just gonna go to here and then make an attack on a d6. He hits, do we block it? We do, and there's no dice to reduce. Uh, and then these ones just pile in, but can't be adjacent. Three is the night guard, he'll roll, but then can't move, so it doesn't really matter. He gets a 10 lumbering charge, but doesn't move because he can't see us. Group two is the rats. They roll a five, and that's going to be a sewer swarm. Uh, they heal, doesn't matter, then they all advance. So one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Two of them are gonna attack Oc or um, Dagne. First one misses, second one uh, hits, and then does he block it? He does not. He'll spend that to reroll, though. He doesn't want to get diseased. Nope, he gets wounded. Or diseased, rather. Take a wound, it'll just come off the start of the turn, so I'm not even going to place it. These guys are going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Event phase. Special event table. 
Five, the withering. The leader must take a hero and subtract one from all the damage the hero deals. Uh, let's just give that to Octrin. Big deal. He'll take that. Roll, Dagne. Uh, that's a one. Sweet. It can stay a one. Done. Rerolls that one. It's a pretty sweet dice. Still no destiny. Rio is also laughing. I'll make that a six. Octrin. Uh, won't bother inverting his dice. I'll just leave them where they are. It is fallen, so it is everybody powers up. That means uh, two dice attacks for the corpse rats and the bat swarms. Night Guard gets hyper dangerous. Group two's going first, then group three. Then it's going to be Glario. Group four. And then Dagne, Octrin, and whoever, but we have to reshuffle these because they're unpredictable. They're actually placed face down. So it's actually group three going first, which is the night guard. You can't see anybody. Then group two, which is going to be the rats. They do. 11. That's a death leap. Uh, everyone attacks us and we can attack them too. So this one charges. Uh, get to reroll. Does one damage. Does Dagne stop it? He does not. So i going to flip this to wounded now. And that goes to disease, which makes it a one. He gets to make a free axe attack into that rat. And it lives. The next one does the same thing. And does it grievous? Does he block any? Nope. So he'll take two damage, which means this becomes a one. Uh, and that's a grievous. Normal wound, but then he gets to fight back and kill it. This one goes and does one, maybe a grievous. Nope. Does he block it? He sure does. Just to fight back and kill that one too. No, actually one's got four wounds. Takes three. And then this one goes one, two and attacks him. But re-rolls and gets a Grievous. He blocks it all. back and does three and kills it because he's base three. This one goes one, two and attacks him as well. And misses, but re-rolls and misses. He fights back and does three to it. But it's a boss route so it doesn't die. And the last one also attacks. He's covered in rats. Covered in rats. Does one, which he blocks. And then he fights back. And if he just hits, he kills it. And he does. Good job, dwarf. Now it's Glorio's turn. Uh, he's gonna smash this thing. Charge. One, two, three, four. No, I won't do it. He'll just make a run. One, two, three, four. Then he'll make a charge attack. One, two, shoot a gun. I guess he'll just stab his sword. That's all it really matters is to hit, kills. Another charge, and this time he'll shoot his gun first into that rat and miss. And run four, one, two, three, four. That's revealed to be group one, which is the bats. Uh, do any come back, first of all? Two do. Uh, the first one comes back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here. And we'll advance. One, two, three, four, and attack. And do a Grievous, which is two damage, unless it gets blocked, which it doesn't. So, one. That becomes a one. Dagny's not doing well. And these three all attack uh, Jelson. First one does a hit. Oh, sorry, what is it that they do? 11. 11 for the bats is a frenzied assault, and they reroll charges. They both do one damage. Does he block it? Oh, not wrong dice. He's a D8 defense. Well, ah, I'll roll that properly. He does. Second one misses, but re-rolls. Nope. The third one misses, but re-rolls. Nope. It's Dagne's turn. I feel like he just needs to really make this vitality check. <laughs> ha! One. So you can flip one or remove one. He'll flip one. Pretty weighed down by bats and rats right now. It's Jelson. He really needs to carve his way over there and go punch that button. He will. So sword stab into the boss bat. And unless he blocks it, he's dead. He's dead. And it's a gunshot into the next bat. Miss. And then a gunshot into the last bat. Uh, it's two unless he blocks it. He does down to one. Do the stakes kill him? Yes. I guess he isn't adjacent, so he could move in and be done. Fire twice, or three times rather. It's Tregilius, 
And he'll make his activation roll, but he doesn't move because he can't see anybody yet. He gets a one. Or deploy all slain corpse rats from hostile groups as reinforcements. Uh, and then deploy, yeah, that's it. He would make an advance, but he can't make an advance. So they just deploy, uh, but that means that there's four of them showing up. The first one, 12 is over here. So that advances, one, two, three. The next one is a 12, so it's just shows up behind. Then a seven, uh, so that's over here, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Advances, one, two, three. Last one, 11's back over here. Hangs out with Torgelius. Same combat group as them, so they don't activate, but the reinforcements get to make their advance. We're capped out for time. Everything's reinforced and crazy and dangerous. And he gets to drop a wound, which is why I, I flipped that one instead, because he'll drop it on the next turn if I don't accidentally or somehow heal it. For this turn, sorry. Uh, one, no destiny. Hey, look, we didn't get the dice we didn't get. Two dice for whole, um, Dagne. That one will go to a one. Let's do it with Octrin. Uh, he's, I guess he could have run over here. He could go one, two, three, and then one, two, and then pop that, and then he could run again. One, two, three, four, and end up there. You could step over Jelson to get there. All right, sweet. I completely forgot about his activation at the end of the turn. Uh, Jelson gets to reroll this. He's happy. Rio, also happy. He'll make uh, the three of six. Dren. I will not bother inverting his dice because that's a good roll. To cut our way through, it's going to be Dagne, group four. Oh, sorry. It doesn't matter what these are right now because they're going to get reshuffled and they will. He's going first no matter what. He's going to spend this one for a vitality check. See if we can get better. Yeah. So we're going to remove two. That means this is down here. And then we attack. Let's attack into him. Uh, does three. Does he block any of it? Yes, so it's just two, but that'll still kill one. So he blocks two to a minimum one. It's all done. Uh, so now it is surprise, Torgilius. <laughs> deploy all bats, maybe. 12. Mm, flock of nightmares, deploy all flame bat swarms, and then they immediately make an advance. Uh, sweet, so number one on eight, which is over here. One, two, three, four. Makes an attack. 2D. Six, does one. Does Dagnate block it? He does. Covered in dudes. Uh, the next bat swarm goes to six, which is over here. I'll go after Jelson. One, two, three, four. And attack. Uh, Grievous, which is two damage. Does he block any? D8. Yes, one. Two, which is over here. Goes after Octrin. One, two, three, four. And then attacks with 2d6. Nothing. Last one. Is going six, which was over here again. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, we're just going to the same square. And also attack. Grievous. Block it. He blocks one of the two, so he'll get wounded. Okie dokie. Well, that was terrifying. And then they, he advanced, but he can't. Step will be group three, which is uh, the Krasagi. He can't do anything. Then it's Glario. Mm. We just want to kill this guy. <laughs> Technology. You could run in and try and dumpster him. I think you will. He'll go one, two, three, four with a charge action and make a noblesse attack and do a grievous. Does any get blocked? No, oh, it takes three. Stop with his sword and do two. Is any blocked? Nope. So five. He'll stab with his sword again uh, and do three. Get blocked. Nope. He's at eight. And then he'll spend five to run away. Uh, doing a charge action again, but he'll fire with no bless on the way out. And do a Grievous. Is any blocked? No. Kills the Kasagi and then runs away. Or runs forward even. One, two. Backwards. One, two, three. Yeah, just hit and run. Unless for inspiration, he does. Octrin, can you kill the bat? Uh, do a stare. Care Bear stare. Get a Grievous. You do. What? It's not. You stare it to death. And you go to start giving a paddling. He's gonna make a three. Uh, one, two, three. And just sit here, ready to make more stairs. He's going down to five. And four. Get a three or less. Nope, no uh, inspiration for you. Jelson, uh, I think you hold the door and make a run. One, two, three, four. Make a vitality check, try and get rid of that wound, because you really don't want to have 
I wouldn't counter on you. You do. Sit on that dice. And that is going to be that for them. So the next one up will be group one, which is the bats. Worst ones for them. Yes. Where does it arrive? The one that just died on 10, which is over here. It'll advance and go one, two, three. And attack. Dang. Does a damage, which he does not block. So this goes to one, goes to diseased. We're about to attack him. First one, Grievous, uh, which he blocks one of. So this will go to a Grievous wound. The last one, misses. Let's go one, two, three, four. And we can attack him with Jelson. Attack, uh, Grievous. Actually, I don't think it, he can't stop it. Four minus two is still two, and then we have two wounds. This one's got to go in. One, two, three, four. And make an attack. And do one. Does he block it? He does not. He'll... Oh, he might actually. No, he doesn't have any, it doesn't have any inspiration, so he'll take one. And then again with the next one. Does one, which he blocks. One, two, three, four. And he stands there, actually. Okay. Uh, then it's just last but not least... Number two, Orson's for the bats. No, rats rather, no. Uh, and then they just start piling and attacking. So three against Dagne. First one hits, does he block it? No, uh, so he'll take a damage. So, sorry, and another, another, um, what should we call it? Another, d this. Next one attacks and misses. This one's gonna try and move. One, two, three. Actually, can't get anywhere. It just stays where it is. These guys. Oh, sorry. We didn't roll to see what they did. They might. They might charge. Eight is death leap. So we get to make free weapon actions against them afterwards. Uh, so against the wounded one, it's dead. Against the other one that missed me, and it, actually it would have rerolled its attacks and done one, which was not blocked. So that flips to grievous. And another disease goes underneath it, I guess. Uh, he gets to attack it, and it takes three and dies. This one could surf, then it go one, two, three, and also attack. And do one, do two. Does it get blocked? One does, which means this becomes wounded. And they're all diseased. <laughs> Dagne is riddled with syphilis at this point. Attack it back, and he kills it. Dagne, you, you filthy dwarf. This guy goes, uh, and the death leap is a charge. So it'll be one, two, three, in which case he could shoot and maybe kill it. There's no point in shooting it. Just wait for it to move again. One, two, it attacks. Uh, it hits you. You get defense D6. You block one of the two. So you're gonna get diseased and a damage. She gets your attack back for free with the hollow stare. And miss. And this guy goes. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you'll shoot it. Duel. And do a Grievous, which is three, and kill it. It goes one, two, three. One, two, three. And do the same thing again. With your last dice. And you kill it. A little disease now. I mean, par for the course. End phase. Ten. Sweet. We can remove a disease or make a vitality check. Dagny's making a vitality check. He likes getting rid of Grievous Wounds. Yeah, he does. Twice. Uh, he's riddled with disease, but the service activation, that'll go away as well. All right, well, it doesn't matter what uh, I roll here, because these are all ones, because he is filthy. <laughs> he's got three. He's ready to go party. Glario. You're laughing today. And then Octran. I don't know what order these happen in, but we'll just leave this like this and then invert them because I'm pretty sure it's better. Invert them afterwards. I can choose to invert the facing of all my activation dice. Yeah, well, let's just do that. Got successes or crit successes against disease, guys. It was bad for Dagnate, but didn't really change anything because it was only one or two damage. Okay, then, uh, let's see what initiative is. We're getting close. Activation, group, no, it doesn't matter because <laughs> these are all getting reshuffled. So it's Dagne, Glario, Octrin, Jelson, and then random groups, which we'll shuffle right now. Is four, Torgilius. What does he do? Four. 
Chilling Whispers, pick a hero. They must remove an activation dice from their card if they can't suffer two damage. Uh, I guess you lose a dice. I'm gonna go murder that guy. Uh, Dagne, you, yeah, kill everyone. Axe, axe attack. Wounded Bat, it dies no matter what. It only has two wounds. Uh, boss Bat, does three, reduces it to one. Boss Bat again, dies, because he, ah, he might reduce it to, to one and take only two, no he dies. Uh, and then last bat, three, doesn't reduce it. You fought your way out of the bats, but you used all your dice. Filthy with disease, and then it's gonna be Gloria. Make a charge, shoot that rat so you can run by it, and he'll do three, which won't actually kill it. I guess he didn't need to do that, actually. He should have shot it first, then made the charge attack, because he can't actually kill it. Now he'll do it again, and do three and kill it. And he gets to run. One, two, three, four. And he charges again. One, two, three, four. He's got one dice left, but he can't shoot, so he just moves. One. Mm, no, he stays there. Saves a die. Yeah, because I could have gone one, two, three, four and been here. Keep those last two dice, actually, and drop them down to four and five. Going in if I can't do any damage. Trin. Uh... Just heal. So one to remove this, one to make a vitality check. He's vitality D12, and he'll pass. We'll probably kill that guy next turn, if we're lucky. Jelson, the bats have yet to go, but I think we just go try and kill. So run, run, uh, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we can see, take a shot. How much do we do? Nothing? <laughs> Sweet. Thing to be done about that. So that's you done. Torgulius is already gone. So next up is two, which is the rats. Back. And where? Nine. It's right here. So they advance and then make an attack. Six. It's a Grievous. Does he block it? He blocks one, gets wounded. Being riddled with disease. That's going to be group one, which is the bats. Back. Two come back. One to the six, which is gonna be way over here. And he'll advance, one, two, three, four, five. And the next one to the 12, he'll advance and attack. But Jelson can't do anything because he's used his gun. So he just sits there. Max Jelson uh, with the Grievous, which is blocked. It's blocked to one, so this becomes Grievous. It's just the night guard, does he come back? Enforcement. No. Event phase, four. That's going to be a Will of the Master. No wait, it's a, uh, until the start of the next event phase, every hero's cursed. Ceramic Hex Wards, we're all cursed. Falls off for Indomitable, and these all become one. Jelson gets a three of four and a reroll. Five. Leo is ready to party. Trin. We'll invert his dice. Oh, I forgot to make two guys attack, actually. Uh, these guys would have both attacked Octrin. See if it mattered. First one. Nope. Second one. Grievous. Does he block any on a d6? Blocked one of them. So this would actually be a wound then. I'll just reroll these, actually. It was a really good roll. <laughs> Didn't matter. Activation. Group four. So Turgulius first again. Uh, that's going to be, whoops, Dagne. Glario, the Night Guard, Jelson, Octrin. What do you do, Torgilius? Something crazy? We're all cursed. 12. Flock of Nightmares, then we advance. So, Flock of Nightmares, these two guys reappear. 10 is over here. And they advance. Uh, one, two, an attack. And that's a Grievous. Does Dagne block any of it? Two damage gets blocked to one, so that'll go away. It appears. 12, it's over here, and advances, but can't fight anybody. He also advances and goes one, two, and that's all he can do. And it's Dagne's turn. Uh, I guess, I feel like he runs, to be honest. I feel like he just starts running away and leading these guys off. Because he could move nine. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and just wait. Pop the door open when everyone dies. Dagna, you've done your job. You've, you've held the line. Leo. Hmm. Shoot, shoot, charge, probably. Shot into 
First bat, no bless. Uh, it'll be three. Locked. Nope. So that one's dead. And then do a charge shot. Shoot the second one. Hit. Is that even blocked? Nope. I'll slay him. And then he can make a run. So one, two, three, four. He just goes attack, attack. Geist sever, which does two. Geist sever again, which does two. So he's taking four. Glario, you're getting work done. Doggy come back. No. And then it's Jelson. You just need to kill everything, buddy. And you can shoot like crazy. So gunshot into this guy. That's four, so he's dead. But then he comes back to life immediately. And this goes away. The stake hit him. Sure does for two. Shoot again. Get a crit. We're probably gonna kill him. We did. Four. And I'll put him at six. Finish him off. Sure does. Okay, we're gonna get Destiny Dice next turn, and then we can run. One, two, three, four. Octrin. Eyeball laser these guys. First one. That's uh, one damage which can't be reduced, and then eyeball lasers again, and then kill the other one. Last eyeball lasers, and the blood bat. Nope. Inspiration? No, two or less. It's gonna be group two, which is the rats. Back, one does, and where does it come back? On the seven, that's over here. It'll advance, one, two, three. The other ones do nine. Death leap, charge, and then reroll misses, and then we get to attack. So that's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three. Quite get to fight. And then last but not least is the bat. Come back. One. One. One, which is way up here. And it'll advance. And go one, two, three, four, five towards Octrin. This one will attack Octrin. Do seven. Blood second bite, plus one, plus one damage. Nope. Goes five and goes one, two, three, four, five. Max does one, two damage, which is not blocked, uh, but then he becomes slain. Flies away to feast. Last one. Blood second bite is an advance as well. One, two, three, four, five. It's event phase. Seven. The Screaming Walls! The leader must pick a hero that has inspiration points or is inspired. That hero loses all their inspiration points. If they have no inspiration points, they must flip their character's path to glory. Well, Glory can just lose his inspiration point. Uh, also, he's actually going to have an additional wound on him, which we'll flip back at the start of the round, because everyone was cursed this round that took damage. Yeah, Dusty dies back! Yay! Uh, the all go away except for a one, though. Healthy Dwarf. You can get one and one. You can kick the door. Oh, yeah, because it's all ones. Ugh. And then Derek, he's happy. Uh, the man legend that is Glario, also happy. And he'll make that a six. Trin is ready to party. Won't bother inverting. Those are good dice. Get out of here. Group two. Oh, it doesn't matter again. Uh, Glario, Dagne. And then we reshuffle all the bad guys. What's up? It's gonna be Trigelius, who's dead. So then it's Glario. Gonna, I guess, move. He's the furthest away. So one, two, three. Might as well use that dice because Dagna can't use it. Then charge. One, two, three, four. And he'll take a pistol shot at that bat. And kill it if it doesn't roll. Fuck. It does not. So it's dead. He'll charge again. One, two, three, and sword this time. Clearing the way. Uh, do two. Docked. Nope. So he'll kill that one as well. Just take a pistol shot, I guess, into that other bat. Second pistol shot. And hit for three. Reduced. Nope. So it's also dead. So he's done seven wounds so far. And then his last one, he'll just run again. Uh, one, two, three, four. Glory just dancing across the table. Clearing the way. Agne, shoot that rat. Can't. He has to move and shoot. Well, he'll take a step and then he'll hit with his axe. Why not? Land it. Actually, that's four wounds, so you can't even kill it. You do three. And it's going to be the night guard. Does he show up? Sure does. Show up. Yeah, far. Uh, no, over here. And he advances. One, two, three. Then it's going to be Octrin. What does he want to do? He could run, move. So he could go run. One, two, three, four. Move one, two, three. 
And then eye lasers. Yeah, the Care Bear Stare, just do one. Yeah, you kill him. Mario and Spire from all those bats. He sure did. Okay, to give it all away. And Octrin's done. This will be group one. Come back. No. And it's Jelson, and he could just run. Go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And we finished. And then last but not least will be the rats. Reinforce. Yeah, twice. First one. On five. Uh, which is here. And advances. One, two. Attack. For one, two. Uh, sorry, it's a crit against Dagne, but he'll block it. For one, so this flips. And the other one, close for behavior, gets a four, which is an advance. One, two, three. Phase. Ten. Uh, born hero. Well, I mean, <laughs> let's do it, Dagne. Drop both. Heck yeah, you can. He's just super diseased, that's all. You need a bath. Need for the turn. Mm, two's lock out, keep the rest. Let's look, looking like the turn we're getting away. Agne, it's all ones, doesn't matter what I roll. So he can't open the door, but he could open the door off the board. Not that he's adjacent to it anymore. It's gonna be Jelson's job, probably. Or just one of the jabronis who walks through. Uh, Jelson's got three dice. He can reroll those ones, though, because he's disciplined. Mario. You're a hero, buddy. Turn that to a six. Level three Glario is pretty rad. Octrin, and also ready to party. Because he found the books. Found the books he was looking for. Um, okay, so let's see what the initiative order is. Turn. Uh, three. We don't actually make, we don't reshuffle these now that Turgulius is dead. So it doesn't matter. So it's gonna be three, then Glario, then two, then Jelson, then one. And then it's going to be Octrin and finally Dagnar. Uh, what do you do, Mr. Krasagi Nightguard? 11. That's a lumbering charge. One, two, three, and then fight, because he can't get next to anybody else. Three, empowered. Uh, six damage. Yikes. Ha! We block none of it. We'll reroll that with a point and block none of it. Okay, well, we lose three dice. Crap, those guys are horrifying. Nice to get away, as long as somebody else opens the door now. We could still open the door ourselves. Uh, and thankfully we will. Glory didn't like that, but he's gonna charge and go one, two, three, four, and make a no bless attack of that rat. And do three, but not kill him. We'll call the door and do another one. Is this six to do it? And stab that rat, or shoot him even, and kill him, and then just duck in. Two rats, do any come back? No, this one just advances. Uh, sorry, it doesn't advance, it rolls on the table. It, it death leaps. And kill Dagne. And re-rolling. Does he block it? Doesn't, so he takes a wound, and he's super diseased, but he gets a free attack against it. And it's dead. It's Jelson, and he's just gonna go stand in here. Bye. And keep these fives. And here, just so you can see out. There's the bats, do when he come back? To do. To the seven, which is over here, and they'll go one, two, three, four, five, and sorry, four, five in advance. One, ha, arrives right here, and advances and charges Octrin, but we'll shoot it with Jelson. Good covering fire, buddy. Uh, it's gonna be two damage. Block it. He blocks it. No, he doesn't. He dies. It's Octrin. He just runs. One, two, three, four, and the five. And then it's the man, the legend, that is Dagne, and he just does some walking, and they make him stand at the front because he's filthy. We've slain Torgilius the Chamberlain. You have to put his thing down. That's Radikers. That's the Van Alten triplets. There he is. Uh, if the user successful place the decapitation token on the card, if the Van Alten triplets decapitation token is also there, we can go to level four, but we can't yet. In addition, they gain experience. If the heroes are not successful, grow fear and influence by one. Our extraction is plus one. We get a four. For journey the heroes undertake before making the first activation roll, they each suffer one damage. And we have one Realm of Stone card that we could spend, but we can't spend anything because it's not enough to buy anything. So that is the game. And so you go with the quest to kill Torgilius results in a resounding victory, although we had a very beat up dwarf at the end of it all. He's a bit diseased. It's gonna sit back and enjoy a nice rack of penicillin <laughs> while he recovers. Uh, and in two weeks, we'll see you for the, um, I guess, penultimate showdown. It's gonna be the Van Alten triplets, uh, where we'll bring in Calathus and show you how she functions as a, an archer 
and Fighter and the other executioner replacing Jelson for the mission. So anyway, big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more of this in the future. Till then, I'm Ash. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs, um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible, uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else, and most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.